name is Chris Turhan. Welcome to another episode of Drinks from Eddie Muller's Noir Bar. Each week I take a chapter from the book Eddie Muller's Noir Bar, Cocktails Inspired by the World of Film Noir, and I talk about the film in that chapter and make the drink associated with it. Today we are looking at the film Force of Evil and the drink The Blacklisted. Now The Blacklisted is probably absolutely the best Probably, absolutely, yeah, let's qualify it a few more times. It's the best drink you could come up with for this movie. Um, two of the most crucial players in making this film were both adversely affected by the Hollywood blacklist. First of all, it stars and was uh, produced by John Garfield. And John Garfield was uh, put on the blacklist. He had been a supporter of the Committee for the First Amendment, which was a group that that supported uh, and fought against the House Un-American Activities uh, Committee in their communist witch hunt in Hollywood in the late 40s and early 50s. Um, he was asked, John Garfield, was asked to testify uh, before the committee, and in his testimony he said he didn't know anybody who had been a communist, which for all we know is probably true. I mean, you know, you don't necessarily go around asking people what their political affiliations are with uh, with co-workers. Um, he could have very easily given up somebody that the committee already had. Uh, you know, like one, he could have named two or three people in the Hollywood 10 and he would have been just fine more than likely. But he didn't want to do that. And as a result, he paid the price. And he paid a very stiff price because about a year after he was blacklisted, he died within a year, roughly. And um, it's most people agree that it was the stress of being on the blacklist that killed him. Uh, the other person that was adversely affected by this was the uh, director and co-writer of the screenplay, um, Abra Abraham uh, Polanski, who actually had been a member of the Communist Party in the 1930s, but that's not really against the law. In fact, what kind of kept him from being worse off was that he served in World War II and was a member of the SAS, which was the uh, the early version of the CIA. So he actually served his country during the war, and he had been a member of the Communist Party in the 1930s when the Depression was on. It seemed like capitalism had failed the country and the people, and and he joined the Communist Party. But he refused to testify in, uh, in the House on american Activities Committee, and as a result was blacklisted. He was able to get some work by, by writing and using uh, a front to sell his work, but he, ma he directed this film in 1948. He didn't direct another major motion picture until 1969, more than 20 years later. Now, the story of the film is John Garfield is a lawyer. He works for a gangster who is, is involved in the numbers racket. And John Garfield has come up with, by the way, I guess I should probably say there are spoilers here, but most of these spoilers will happen in the first about 10 minutes of the movie. So um, I don't think it's going to be, it just is the premise of the movie. Uh, John Garfield is a lawyer. He works for a gangster. Um, he has, you'll learn a lot about the numbers racket, which is basically an illegal lottery. Um, John Garfield has come up with a plan to fix the number on one day, which will have the effect of wiping out all of the small bookies uh, and keeping all the big ones standing. And he's also working the legal end of the thing to turn the numbers racket into a legal government lottery with all of with his boss and all of the bigger racketeers involved in it so turning them from gangsters into solid legal citizens and what really makes this this film interesting is that it looks at things like the lottery and it compares it to the old, the illegal numbers system it shows that they are exactly the same and shows that the people at the top are very corrupt and there are people on the, the bottom who are just trying to get by who treat it as a business and, you know, act act 
decently to their people, to the people they serve, to the people who work for them. Um, John Garfield's brother, played by Thomas Gomez, is uh, is one of the small uh, small numbers places, and John Garfield, his plan is to set his brother up as one of the big banks so that his brother will be very rich, but his brother doesn't like him. His brother, he, his brother took care of him when he was a little kid and their parents died. He put him through college. He didn't get a chance to go to college. Presumably he put him through, through law school. And this whole time, his brother hasn't been by to visit him, hasn't kept up with him. But now he, his brother is going to make him very rich, but he doesn't want that money. And it just kind of goes the way brothers are. You know, you have brothers who are completely different from one another. And that's exactly the case. I have two brothers and we're all different people. And to be honest with you, there are certain situations where I couldn't tell you what one of my brothers would do. The other brother I'm pretty sure about. The, the, the other one, uh, maybe not. So anyway, now we're gonna move on to the drink. Uh, actually, not yet. Um, it's it is a great movie. Uh, it's a movie that doesn't pull any punches. It has a great cast. Uh, John Garfield's very good in it. Thomas Gomez is very good in it, and it's just a really, really first-rate film. So, the drink, the blacklisted. This is a, I've never had this drink, but I can tell you I'm going to love it. Um, I have had drinks similar to this dozens and dozens of times, if not hundreds of times. Um, I have had drinks that are very closely related, very adjacent to this drink. This drink is a very simple drink. You have a sweet component with honey syrup. You have a sour component with um, your fresh lemon juice. You have a spirit component with rye. But I can tell you right now, the same drink would probably work very well with bourbon, which is very close to rye, but it would also work real well with rum. It would work great with gin. It would work great with tequila. It, it just, I think it, would, it wouldn't be the same drink, but it would still work. Uh, you could, we're going to make this as a cocktail in a coupe glass, um, but you could serve it over the rocks and, and let the ice melt and maybe, maybe tone down the flavor a little bit with a little bit more melted ice. And that would work real well too. You could, um, you could put it in a highball glass and add some club soda. It would, again, I'm not going to be the same drink, but it would definitely work. I can guarantee you that, uh, it's it's going to be just an amazing drink. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, we're going to start with some blackberries. So we've got two, three, four, and we've got we need some rye whiskey, and we're going to do an ounce and three quarters of rye whiskey. Okay, and we're going to do three quarters each of honey syrup, which is made with just equal parts honey and water. You heat it up so that it mixes well. And you have fresh squeezed lemon juice. You got three quarters of an ounce in that, of that. Oops, we went a little bit high there. So I'm going to just do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to muddle the blackberries. So I'm just kind of pushing them down to the bottom to get the juice out of them. Okay, and then we are going to add our ice. going to give it a good shake. Okay. And there we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to double strain this. So, I'm going to take my normal strainer and I'm going to take another strainer and the one strainer will keep most of the ice out. The other strainer will get the bits and pieces of 
blackberry that and that's a great color on that drink I'm just gonna get that and then for a garnish we've got one more blackberry and we're just gonna drop that right in and here we go now as I say I've never had this drink but I've had this drinks cousins a whole lot of times and I know this is going to be awesome oh yeah yeah you can you can still get you can still get the rye but you're also getting some really great sweet flavors some really good tart flavors you're, the blackberries coming through really strong on this uh, that, that's that's a good drink um next week i don't know what we're doing next week i completely forgot to uh decide on which one we're going to do i'm actually recording this a week ahead of time because next week i'm out at comic-con but i'm going to try to get an extra video up anyway even though i won't be there to do it but um anyway from a booth in the back of eddie muller's noir bar we're going to say cheers See you next time.